Okay, welcome back to the, the Racing Years Part 2 and uh, Simon's invited us into his brilliant little workshop and slash library slash uh, man cave, whatever you'd like to, to call it. Uh, and he's going to talk a little bit about his, his beautiful car collection, which we've got a, a very famous and well-known uh, Stove Special. We've got an AC Ace and just behind the camera we've got a, a nice Corvette as well. So uh, I'll hand over to you Simon really and uh, you can tell us a little bit more about your collection. Well I'm very lucky because each of the cars that I've got in a different way um, is special to me. Um, I'm not somebody who buys and sells cars. Um, I've only got room in here for four cars anyway and I love the four I've got so there's no prospect of me buying an, another one or indeed selling any of these. Um, the Stove Bolt Special as it's known, originally an HWM but now with a Chevrolet engine which it's had since 1955, so it's, it's very much in the same form that it's been for most of its life. Um, started life as a works HWM Formula 2 car in 1950, was successfully raced by the young Sterling Moss, um, then went to America, strangely, to appear in a Hollywood movie driven by Kirk Douglas. And when the film company had finished with it, they sold it in America um, to a West Coast racer who fitted the small block Chevy in it. The small block Chevy was very new in 1955 um, and this was one of the first cars, probably the first road racer um, as opposed to dragsters or midget racers which had the small block Chevy um, which of course has become in the ensuing 60 years one of the great racing engines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, that's the server. The other wonderful thing about the server, as far as I'm concerned, is I don't like trailers. I can't face, at my great age, mucking around with tow cars and trailers and mm -hmm. loading up in the rain and all that sort of thing. This car is road legal, so I drive it everywhere. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I've raced it, for example, in Australia, and when I um, had it in Australia. I did a bit of motoring um, around uh, the Australian outback. Not very far, but enough to say the it. car has yeah. been driven in Australia. Yeah. Um, I raced it at Laguna Seca in California. I did a bit of road going. I've raced it in um, France. Been to some wonderful French hill climbs, yeah. and this on the French roads. Go off the auto routes, go on the back roads through the villages, and so on. It's wonderful. Yeah. So I love it dearly. It's a road car. It's a wonderful hill climb car, um, and it's just some. It, it, it's part of me now. I've yeah. had it for 22 odd years, um, and I hope I can keep it forever. Yeah. It's what I saw. When I first saw you in, and uh, the noise of it, and the smell of it. Um, and, and the continuous history, I think it's just, as you say, it's part of you and um, mm. it, it's, it's great to see thrive in it really and uh, yeah. Brilliant. Well, I mean, to tell you the sad, well, sad, to tell you the slightly kind of uh, anoraki story, um, the car was built in 1950, as I say, but in 1955 into 56, it was converted into this car and became known as the Stone Bolt Special. And when I was at school, aged, I don't know, 12 or something. Um, I was uh, in boarding school. Uh, my parents, to cheer me up, used to send me car magazines. And they found an American car magazine in 1956. And they sent it to me. And on the front cover of this car magazine was the most wonderful looking car with cycle wings and a big engine. And I cut that um, picture out and I kept it above my desk at school because I thought it was a car that I would absolutely love to own. And if I can find it, where are we? <laughs> there is the car. <laughs> yeah, perhaps we can we can, we can zoom in a little bit on that. But uh, it's safe to say that you've you've accomplished it, really. <laughs> that's that's the car that I loved as a twelve-year-old. Wow. And how lucky am I 
<laughs> because I was able to... Yeah, it's not really sure if you're all to say that, can it? Uh, it was in the States, belonged to a man I knew slightly. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was able to persuade him he had lots of cars, yeah. wasn't using it very much. Managed to get to part so with it. I managed to get him to part with it, and, and there it is. Brilliant. Great machine. Fantastic. Well, it'd be nice to sit and we could talk about it a lot, but there's a, there's a few cars to get around. So, uh... Well, the ACS, um, again, um, has been part of my life for a very long time. Sounds incredible today when you think how much these cars are worth. But I bought this car when it was three years old. I bought it in 1964. I was a student and it cost me 680 quid. Which in the day was, was, was a lot of money, really. It, it, it wasn't bad. I, I, a, an auntie died and left me £600. I had my Austin A35 van, which I got £85 for. And that's <laughs> that's, that's a step up, isn't it? <laughs> but unfortunately, after I had it for three years, um, uh, it was very tired and the crank broke. Um, and. I didn't really have the money to mend it properly, so I had to sell it. And I pined for it, really, for years afterwards. I so loved this car. And by great good fortune, this actual car, it had gone out to Hong Kong, and it was then brought back by a dealer who found it. And I bought it from the dealer. It wasn't in a great state, but it did cost me more than £680. <laughs> yes. uh, that was in the late 90s. Uh, early 90s, and I've had it ever since. So really, yeah. off and on, this car's been with me for most of its life. Yeah, yeah. And it's a wonderfully usable car because it's got the 2.6 Zephyr engine. They only made 36 um, aces with that engine. And it wouldn't be as quick on the track as an Ace Bristol, which has a much higher revving engine. But probably on the road, this is a better car. Um, it's got an overdrive. Yeah. And on country roads, slipping between third and overdrive third, it's just absolutely glorious. Yeah. It's like a lovely, that. lovely car. I'm very, very fond of it. It's a, it's a very pretty looking car. Mm. Very original. Um, and we just spoke off camera really about the lack of garishness uh, that you see with all the modern modern replicas and things like that. It, it's a it's a very pure shape, beautifully made aluminium body. Um, I actually I did a rally in it in Austria, um, and due to my incompetence, nothing else, um, in the middle of the night, um, I understeered off on mud and clouted a bank. Okay. And um, I was mortified because all of this part was stoved in and uh, a wonderful um, aluminium man restored it using most of the original crumpled aluminium and, uh, and then also matched in the paint. Yeah. And you would never know it happened. And it sort of becomes part of the history of the car, doesn't it? It's it quite does, nice really. that you've been involved. Yeah, with I've, that. I've got some photographs of the damage, which I never let anybody see because yeah. I'm ashamed of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Right, well, we'll, we'll move around to the, uh, the Corvette. Unfortunately, you, your, your Bentley's not here um, just to talk about, but uh, there's still something special just behind the camera. So. So you said you've owned this for a little while as well. I have, but I mean, you can see by the rubbish around me that um, I haven't driven it much this year, uh, which is a great shame because this too is a lovely road car. Um, yeah. It's a 1969 Corvette. It's the spec that I really wanted when I bought it because it's the small block engine, the big block. Corvette 7 litres is really not so nice to drive. No, I can This has the small block Chevy, actually the same as the small block Chevy in the HWM. And it's got the detachable hard top. Yeah. The story of this one, I've owned this one for 51 years. Wow. Um, I bought it in 1972. It's a 1969 model. I bought it in 72. Um, 
from an American serviceman who brought it over um, to Germany where he was stationed and then had to go back to, uh, to America. So I bought it, I think I paid just over £2,000 for it. Um, and for a long time it was my only car in, in the 70s. I drove it every day. Um, petrol was a lot cheaper then. Of course, yeah. And um, it, it made a wonderful car because it's terribly usable. I mean, American cars tend to be strong, yeah. reliable, and unfussy. Yeah. They just keep going. No, um, that's right. Yeah. Um, and I've hung on to it because I'm very fond of it. It's not hugely valuable, but it's a lovely, usable, friendly car. Yeah. Um, and like the others, I couldn't face selling it. No, I think it's got a, one thing the Stinger I did quite well. It's, it's almost European style in a way, isn't it? It's very much not American boxy. Chrome and, and that sort of stuff. That's, that's absolutely right. I mean, it was, to be honest, it was the styling that attracted me when I first bought it. I thought it was a dramatic um, and yet kind of elegant almost. It was surprising to call an American car elegant. But no, it almost I, is. I agree, yeah. Bill Mitchell was the stylist at General Motors for a long time, hugely talented man. Um, and I think this is one of his best shapes. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really nice, but it, it is used. I know you said you won't use it as much this year, but there's a, a few knocks and dings and things, and it, but it makes you quite honest, and I quite like classic yeah. cars that are, are well, being used for what they were intended to be used for. New Year's resolution for next year. We're talking now in mid-December, so next year um, I must put some more miles on it. The great thing, or the great... Um, rule, I think, with if you've got old cars, and this is an argument for not having too many cars, mm -hmm. is you ought to try and put some miles on them at least every month. Yeah. Too many classic cars are kept beautifully polished, um, but yeah. never turn a wheel, yeah. which isn't good for them. No, no. And um, if you can just do a few miles every month, that keeps them in good fettle. That's it, yeah, yeah. Well, brilliant. Okay. Uh, thank there you very are. much for talking to us. Not and, at uh, all. Tune in for the next time at the racing years. Thank you very much.